Makes sense. No, it does hurt. <laughs> For me, it's like 800. I'm like, ouch. <laughs> 800 is nothing. Yeah, 800. That's nice chill. I usually do, I only use it for gas, that's why. No, um, also, like, I, uh, I splurged on that. Well, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was going to get my whole breakdown. Oh, you know what? I didn't know you're, 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 you're coping, you're coping is buying? A lot through this past month. Well, I'll, I'll take it later. Yeah. Like, and the, the context makes sense. Uh, yeah. Can I tell myself that? Just rest. You tell me what Chuck's left. You want to work I heard we're finally doing answers. We are. It worked. The we literally started working this afternoon. So the IT the IT guy was telling me like, yeah, we might. We, we, the goal is definitely perform, like guaranteed Friday. Yeah. And I'm like, like we're not getting it tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was tough. He was he was he was here late, really late yesterday. He stayed so, up till midnight. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I owe I owe him so I owe him a gift for sure <laughs> to get for him to get it done by today. Oh, also, I got. Uh, feel free to look through it, John. Yeah, I, I was confirmed by ACC. We cannot request fund for our okay. okay, it's just for student. Yeah, yeah. I I have I have my own travel pool that I can fill for. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll figure something out myself. Sounds good. Yeah. Just one we lost earlier. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Later, Chloe. Hello, Angie. Hello. Hello. Right on. Nothing much. I'm waiting for Jerry. He asked me if I could. I mentioned my cookbook. And he also had a cast iron. So I brought my cast iron. He just saw oh, Jerry. Nice. <laughs> Wait, Jerry's in Stuxton? No. He didn't like uh, the 401 class we have. Is that in this room? No. It's, no. Oh, okay. The ending here. You won't think anything of any of them. You don't put a cast iron. The cast iron is just a skillet. So any skillet you can cook. It, it's okay to say you don't you don't want any recipe. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna be a man. I wanna make a steak in a cast. You want it? You want a recipe? There's one. Very pretty. The recipe in there? Yeah, steak will one. Can That's you alone. Use it on other like skillets too. Yeah, it's just a skillet recipe. It's just if it says let it rest for four minutes, usually because you know how cast iron stays hot. Yeah. That's just so it can cook like in those five minutes. But if you're gonna cook it on another like skillet, you just cook Maybe. it longer. Because <laughs> I, I got a couple of them, but I think my last cast iron is all rusty. Oh, well. No, yeah, it's always bad when they're too dusty. I know. My mom like looked at like, all water. I'm not sitting down. You want the SI room, but I'll have it. You have to season it. I would say it's pretty interesting. I think you said garlic, salt, jalapeno. Why? And then he's real bad, and then you give them away. Oh, everybody wants to be sent in my way. I'm part of the big house. I'm going to get hair on spice. Your mom won't see you. He doesn't like spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fine. 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 He's Mostly it's just have a nano though. Like sometimes it's just like they name the first time. Just in your mouth. It's just spice. Oh, no. Actually, yeah, I should turn on the other. You want to look at the phone? I'm, so I'm just offering it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why do we have it? I cook with cook. I cook. I actually cook with cat eggs. Well, that's nice. So I have to have one. I just look at it. Oh yeah, I mean you can always cook with just a regular skillet. Oh, it's different. Oh, you made. But I said you. No. Oh. <laughs> you don't oh. forget. My eyes lit up. Oh, that's because you're doing a lot of hard work. Right. Well, this is my first time eating. <laughs> Any of these that you like? <laughs> what if you just scanned all of it and then post it? Uh, what do you think? I mean, 
I'm pretty sure you guys can afford 15 bucks. <laughs> it's not like a what 120 bucks. Wait, what happened? Oh, no. Are you at your mother? Okay. You didn't have to repair your laptop, right? You're big. No, I did. I haven't put that out. It's like $300. That's so sad. It's new. I have a new laptop. Do they have any onesies? Huh? They have onesies? No, because I just like, stopped. Well, it's only been two years. Uh, like, this is just two years. Uh, uh, like, that's socked up. Big Mac will come for you. Insurance doesn't like to do them. Maybe the last time. Remember when I lost my like my laptop? Yeah. Yeah, they. And like, I said with you. Yeah, they, they usually don't do it, but they gave me like a thousand dollars. I keep your shirt tucked. Yeah. I got my new one. Yeah, I got. That's nice of them. Yeah, they gave me like a thousand dollars. No. Yeah. And how are you doing? You get your senior design project. Uh, we're going to cover everything tomorrow. Yeah, I should enjoy it. Really? Oh, I'm going to get to the... I didn't think the card. The EV card? Yes. And the Formula and you see that piece. Yes. Everyone left. one day we have access to Yeah, oh, like six, that six, some six, six, yeah. Oh, five. Yeah. 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 Do we press the help configuration for ANSYS? So what do you need? Uh, we'll, we'll go over how to launch it. What is that? Huh? Yeah, it's that. I'm just and did Yeah. Uh, Watch. Uh, I guess working. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank you. All right, it's five thirty. Let's go and get started. All right, good evening, everyone. How's uh, how's everyone doing today? Overheated. Overheated. Yeah. Yes, it's very very hot. <laughs> I, I only walk outside my office for just like, you know, two minutes just to walk over here from my office to here. And it was like, this is too much. <laughs> uh, okay, so today is a very exciting day. Um, so hopefully everyone got my email at uh, um, like two this afternoon uh, saying that ANSYS is finally working. So we can finally do ANSYS in this class. Uh, our IT uh, guy worked extremely hard to get this working for us. And so I'm going to bring him a nice gift next week. Uh, I think he was here up until midnight yesterday trying to get to work. So, um, yeah, we worked really hard and, you know, this is a, this is a reward. So uh, today is our first ANSYS activity. It's a week late. Um, so we were going to do this last Thursday, but, you know, um, no day like the present. So we're going to do this today. Um, so today is going to be our first exposure to ANSYS. And so we're going to be doing a very simple simulation. Um, so we're going to be simulating this, uh, I call it a plate with a hole. Um, this is kind of very famously kind of the first ANSYS activity that a lot of people do, actually. So we have this uh, rectangular plate. Uh, it's going to be fixed on the left-hand side of the uh, of the screen right here. Okay. On the right-hand side, we're going to be applying a tensile load, so a tensile pressure. And we're going to see how the plate is going to deform and how the plate is going to, um, how the stress is going to develop. Okay. And of course, in the middle of the plate, we have this hole, um, you know, and that's going to just, you know, the, the hole is there just to show you that, you know, this this analysis is hard to do in uh, with, um, by hand. And so this is kind of, you know, um, as simple as we can get in cases. Okay. So the point of today's activity is, you know, um, you know, normally plates with holes are, are not that interesting. So, you know, we're not getting any really kind of, um, um, I would guess, uh, um, insightful insight from, from this uh, activity. This is really just to kind of get our feet wet with the answers. And so just to kind of familiar, familiarize yourself with the interface, how to interact with the geometries, how to produce meshes, uh, how to apply loads, and view the results. Okay, so this is kind of just you know our first our first introduction to the okay. 
Uh, of course, you know the um, I, I forgot I forgot to uh, so I updated the due date in Canvas. I didn't update this 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 uh, this PDF here. And so you know the first thing you'll probably notice is that the due date is uh, according to this document is tomorrow. Um, so that's not true. So the due date is going to be next Friday. Um, you know because I want to make sure I give you guys a week to do that. So I'll I'll go in and I'll update the uh, the PDF uh, after the office. And it's, it's not going to be due until uh, Friday the thirteenth. Um, which I wanted to avoid uh, having anything do that day, but uh, that's just how, that's just how it is. Maybe we'll have to do Saturday the fourteenth, so it's and so it's not as uh, unlucky. Right, nice spooky. Nice spooky. All right. Any questions I can answer before we get started for today? Okay. Uh, oh, one thing just just because the beginning of this semester has just has just been so hectic. You know, for those of you um, joining on Zoom. Um, there is a student version of ANSYS. I just completely forgot to uh, to send the information out. Uh, so, you, so you know, if you want to um, do this activity at home, and this goes for everyone in the class too, um, you can just search ANSYS student, uh, and then ANSYS actually provides a free download for the software too. So, you want to download ANSYS student, download and install it. Uh, unfortunately, it is quite a heavy package, and so you know, I I, I should have sent this announcement out sooner. So that that was that was kind of my bad. Um, but if you want to download this and install it in the background while you're just kind of following along today, um, then you can you can do this. So, um, yeah, so I, I apologize. I, I should have sent out that information uh, sooner. Um, I'll send another announcement after the class. Just for the okay, so weight with the hole. So this is kind of what we are going to simulate for today. These are all the dimensions. And so the length of the plate is uh, 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters. The width is 200 millimeters. Um, the thickness of the plate, so the thickness is the dimension that's going into the date, that's five millimeters. Uh, our hole is 50 millimeters, and these are the values of the loading and material brought to the space. Okay, so let's start with the very first thing, opening up ANSYS. So ANSYS is, is not the most straightforward program to open up. Because if you uh, normally, you know, if you want to open up a program, you would try to search for its name. Um, but ANSYS, uh, you know, if you try to search up ANSYS in your file system, you may get something like ANSYS Cup. So we don't want that. We actually want to uh, open a program called Workbench, okay? And so if you search up Workbench in your uh, file system, um, we want to open up that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Question in the chat. All right, question. So do I recommend using the answers provided by Cal State Fullerton or to download your own program? No, that's a great question. So um, the student version of ANSYS does have a lot of limitations. Um, so the limitation mostly comes in the into the um, um, the amount of elements that you can use for your simulation. So uh, the ones that are provided by Cal State Fullerton, they have a little bit of a nicer license. So the um, Cal State Fullerton has what's called the academic license. Um, so for all the activities that we're going to do, um, you know, you're going to get the exact same experience whether you use the uh, student version or whether you use the Cal State Fullerton version. Um, but you know, once we once we get to the projects, and uh, you know, in the project, you might need a little bit more um, mesh density. Um, then I recommend using the Cal State Fullerton because you'll you'll be able to produce a little bit of a nicer simulation. Um, but for all the activities that we're going to do in class, it, it doesn't matter. You're, we're, we're not going to push it to um, we're not going to push it to the limit where you would notice it. So um, you'll get the same experience. Okay. A question? Yes. Uh, is that now posted on the software page? No, it's not. So, um, so the only um, academic license that we have with Cal State Fullerton are the ones that are provided in this in this room right here. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, because uh, ANSYS, you know, the way the way they price it is that you have to pay per license, um, and so the only one that's available for free is the student version, which they distribute officially. Yeah. There, there is a virtual. Um, a virtual computing system where like you can kind of remote log into one of these computers um, but it's a little bit slow and so i would i would recommend either come here physically or just use the student version question so like the ones in like e21 that have answers do they just have the same license as you? yeah so any anywhere on campus if it's a camp if it's a, a campus computer it should access the same license server so they'll have the same academic All right, so uh, if you open up uh, ANSYS uh, Workbench, then you should uh, be faced with a screen like this. And if, they, if the license server is working correctly, you should see the toolbox here on the left with all of these things. And so um, this afternoon, I, I came I came in here, I kind of I, you know snuck in while another person was teaching, and I did test it on a couple computers. So 
you know, hopefully everyone was able to get this. So everyone able to kind of see this, this screen here when they open up WordFinish? Good. Thank goodness. All right. I owe the IT guy a great, great gift. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's kind of familiarize ourselves with this interface here. So this is kind of where you need to start. Okay. So the first thing that you need to choose when you, op when you open up ANSYS is the type of analysis that you want to do. Okay. Um, so like I mentioned before, you know, with finite elements, you can, you can run all different kinds of simulations. Uh, as long as the, you know, the type of physics that you are interested in, if it's, as long as it's governed by a differential equation, you can run a simulation with it on ANSYS. Okay. And so if you look at some of the options here, we have fluid flow. So fluid flow, there's actually quite a few options for, for that. Um, you can do harmonic response. Um, that, that has something to do with vibration. So we'll, we'll do that later in the class. Um, there's thermal. So you can use, uh, either do steady state thermal or transient thermal. And we have all of our um, um, structural equations as well. Okay. So for our, uh, our activity today, we're going to do um, you know, probably the simplest um, equation system that we can do, which is static structural. Okay. So static structural, all that means is we're going to run you know, a simulation that's going to that's going to simulate the structure of, a, of an object uh, and it's going to be static. So there's going to be no motion. So we're going to apply static modes and we're going to see how it's going to deform in response to those. Okay. So we're going to take static structural here and we're going to click and hold and we're going to drag it into the project schematic here. Okay. So as you click and hold, there's, there should be a box that appears that you can just click and drag it there. Uh, another way that you can do it is that you can uh, just kind of double click um, you know, double click static structural and should create um, an object. Okay. Okay. All right. So once you do that, you should get this um, this this little box to appear here, and this kind of outlines the steps for our analysis. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we, we need to specify our geometry. Okay. So usually at this at this stage, you would just import a CAD model. So you would you would create a CAD model in uh, um, in another software like SolidWorks, and you import it in. Um, but for today, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the kind of the CAD software that's actually built into ANSYS itself. Okay, um, just just kind of as a just kind of as a tutorial. Um, we'll 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 come back to that uh, CAD software later, even for parts that we kind of produce outside, uh, just because there's there's a lot of useful things that you can. Do. Okay. All right. So we're going to right click on geometry. Um, oh, actually, before we jump into that, we need to actually change the properties of this because, you know, for this simulation here, we're going to be doing a 2D simulation. Okay? Normally, we wouldn't do this because, you know, we are going to be running 3D simulations for the vast majority of this class. Um, but for this activity, just to kind of keep things simple, uh, we're going to we're going to run a 2D simulation. Okay? So you're going to right click on geometry and you're going to go to properties. Okay? So you're going to click on properties. And then doing so is going to open up a new window on the right. Okay, so on this window here, you can set a lot of different properties for your uh, geometry here. But the main one that we're going to change is actually on line 19, which is the analysis tab. Okay, so by default, ANSYS kind of assumes that you're going to run a 3D simulation, which is which is perfectly reasonable. That's 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 probably going to be the case for 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, but for today, we're going to change this to 2D. You're going to come to analysis type here and then click on this drop down menu and then you're going to se select 2D from that. Okay, so that's going to change a few things and so that's going to, you know, um, kind of simplify the settings a little bit. Uh, it's going to make our simulation a little bit easier to run later as well. But you want to make sure that you change your analysis type to 2D. All right, any questions on, on this so far? Okay. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, specify the material properties. Um, let's, let's do the geometry first. We'll do, we'll do material properties. Okay. So let's go ahead and right click on geometry here. And you're going to see that there are three options for CAD programs here. So there's going to be discovery, there's going to be space plane, and there's going to be one called design model. Okay. So ANSYS has added different CAD softwares into its, into its program. Um, if you ask me, it's kind of a waste of space. You don't you don't need three of them, um, but uh, um, you know that's that's kind of what's packaged with it. Right? Okay. So for this activity, you know this this activity was actually written a long time ago. You know before before the age of space claim and before the age of discovery, um, and so we're going to actually run design model. Okay. So we're going to right click geometry, click on new design model or geometry, and that's going to open up a new program. All right. 
a little bit about it. So while that's loading up, let me kind of uh, tell you a little bit about Antis' structure. And so Antis is, is Antis is not just one program. And so Antis is actually a collection or an aggregate of a lot of different programs. Um, and so work, the reason we launched Workbench is that Workbench is kind of the, uh, the manager program that launches all the tools. And so when you click on launch, um, you know, uh, design modeler, it's going to open up another program, which is what we're going to do. And then, and then uh, I guess it comes with uh, ads now too. So I guess, you know, that's, that's what we get paid the free for. So I think probably if you pay, if you pay for answers, then you, uh, you don't get those ads. Okay. So let's, uh, let's construct the geometry. Here. Okay. So we're going to sketch out, we're going to sketch out a, uh, uh, um, we're going to sketch out a rectangle. Okay. So, you know, for those of you who have taken CAD before, um, I think hopefully should be everyone in this class, this, this interface should be um, somewhat familiar. You know, obviously it's different than SOLIDWORKS, but the idea is still the same. Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at in, the, in this um, program here is the left-hand side, where we're going to select a plane for to start our sketch. Okay. Um, so just, just like in SOLIDWORKS, you know, we need to sketch out our geometry. And so for this, uh, for this, um, you know, for our purposes, we're going to perform our sketch in the X Y plane. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click that. And uh, we want to actually view this plane head on, right? So if you kind of look at the view right now, you know, the X Y plane is this kind of you know plane that's defined by the um, the red axis and the and the and the green axis. Okay. So in order to kind of make our sketching a little bit easier, let's let's view this one straight on. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the bottom right-hand side of the screen, where we can kind of see this X, Y, Z axis, and we're going to click on the Z axis. And so what that's going to do is that it's going to change our view so that we're looking right down, you know, right down the uh, the barrel of the Z axis. The zoom is giving me an answer. Okay, so we're going to click on that Z axis, and so now you can see that we're looking, our view is oriented right perpendicular to the X, Y. The z-axis is still there, so you can still see that we still have this kind of blue triangle here. It's just we're just looking right, right at. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a rectangle. Or actually, first thing we're gonna do, let's let's change our units. And so you know, just to kind of make things easier for us, you know, we want to make sure that we're in the appropriate units before we start sketching. So this is a pretty consistent theme in, in ANSYS, and ANSYS kind of ANSYS gives you the ability to change the unit system of your of whatever you're working in, uh, whether you're running on the simulation or you're creating the CAD here. And so it's always important to change the units to something that is convenient. Okay. So we're going to come to the top uh, the top of the screen here, and so if you come to the top uh, if you come to the top um, you know toolbar there, you'll see that there is an option for units. So let's go ahead and click on that uh, button there. And so since our units for this prop for this uh, activity is given in millimeters, we want to change the units for this to be in millimeters. Okay, so you want to change it from meters to millimeters. Yeah. Okay. And so that's going to make things a little bit easier. So when we apply dimensions, it's, it's going to be a bit, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit more convenient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to sketching. So um, to open up the sketching menu, you're going to go to the left-hand side of the screen. And you're going to see that there is a little tab there called sketching. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And so after clicking sketching, you're going to see that there are lots of shapes that are available to you. Okay. All right, so the one that we want is rectangle. So let's go ahead and, and click on a rectangle. And it's a two-point construction. And so to create a rectangle, you're going to click on a, a spit uh, on a place in the uh, in the plane here. Okay. So that's going to locate the first, uh, the first corner of your rectangle. And you're going to click and drag um, the mouse um, to define the other opposite end of the rectangle. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter where you draw it, you know, we're going to dimension it in a second. Uh, but to make things a little bit easier, you can, you know, draw it so that it, it at least encompasses the origin. Okay. So we're going to draw a rectangle just like, just like. Okay. So now that we have our rectangle defined here, we need to dimension it. So we, want, we need to make sure that it has the right length and the right width. So to dimension our rectangle, let me change the color so it's a little bit easier to see. We're gonna to to go to the dimensions tab right here, which is this kind of little um, edit button. We're gonna click on dimensions. Okay. And so now we're opening up the dimensioning tool. So by default, it's gonna to be on the, the general dimensioner, uh, which is fine for us. 
And so to use the general dimensioner, you're going to go to your rectangle, you're going to click on a specific edge. Okay. And so that's going to allow you to um, define a dimension. And so you're going to click on that edge, kind of pull it out a little bit, and then kind of click again. So that's going to define that dimension. And so you want to we want a dimension for the vertical edge of the of the rectangle. We also want a dimension for the horizontal edge. So go ahead and click on one of the horizontal edges. It could be either the top or the bottom. We're going to click and drag that out, and then we can define our dimensions like that. Okay. All right. So. Um, you know, if you're used to SOLIDWORKS, you know, you're probably used to the interface where you can define the dimension kind of directly in the graphical interface right here. Um, ANSYS does it a little bit differently. It's, it's, it's not as intuitive. But if you, if you look at the, the dimension that we just created, you can see that for this one, we created a dimension called V1. And then for the horizontal one up here, it's, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's, the dimension is H2. So the way that we actually set these values is that we actually have to come down to the bottom left hand side of the screen down here. Okay. And you can see that the values for um, B1 and H2 are there. Okay. So to set those values, we're actually going to change them in here. So let's let's go back to our um, spec sheet here. And so we can see that the horizontal length of the of the plate is 300 millimeters, and the horizontal width of the plate or the height. It's going to be 200. So let's let's set the values of our dimensions to be um, equal to these. So V1 in this case, the vertical length of the plate is going to be 200 millimeters. Okay. So you're going to put 200 and you're going to hit enter. Okay. And then for the horizontal length, we're going to set this equal to 300 millimeters. Okay. So just like before, you're going to hit um, enter 300 and then hit enter. And what you should notice is that your, your, your uh, rectangle here should change size. And so you can scroll with the mouse wheel to kind of zoom out just like, just like that. All right, any questions on, on this so far? Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, another useful thing that, that uh, that's, um, you know, that's, that's this, this control is consistent in design model as well as in mechanical, is if you want to pan the, the camera, the way to do that is to hold control on your keyboard and then click on the middle mouse button. And so if you want to pan the screen so that, you know, you can kind of center it a bit easier, um, you can do it that way. Okay, so that is the uh, vertical and horizontal dimensions. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to center this rectangle on the origin because the next thing we want to do is we want to put a hole right in the middle of this button. Okay. okay. So let's center this. Uh, let's center this rectangle. So to center a, a center to center a sketch, uh, we're going to make use of a different um, dimensioning tool, and so we're going to make use of the horizontal dimensioning tool here. Okay. So the horizontal dimensioning tool is going to allow you to specify a horizontal dimension or horizontal distance in your in your model. Okay. So you're going to click on horizontal, and what you want to do is you want to click on a vertical edge of the rectangle. Again, it could be either the left or the right one. And then your second click should be on a, another vertical edge. Okay. And so in this case, we're going to click on the Y axis because we want to specify the distance between the left vertical edge and the Y axis. So that's going to create a new dimension H3. All right, so let's, let's specify that length. And so that should be one half of the, of the total length of the rectangle because we want this to be in the middle. And so that H3 should have a value of 150. And so that's going to center your rectangle right, at least at least horizontally on the. And then we're going to do the same thing with the vertical dimension. So we're going to click on vertical dimension here. We're going to click on one of the horizontal edges of the rectangle. And we're going to click on the x-axis. Okay. That's going to create a new dimension v4. And then v4 should be half of the of the width of the rectangle, which is going to be 100. Okay, so with that, our, our, our rectangle here is perfectly dimensioned. It's, its length and its um, height are perfectly dimensioned, and it's centered on our origin. All right, and then one thing you should notice, too, is that the sides of the rectangle have changed color. And so since they are completely defined, or the, their uh, positions are completely defined, they kind of turn this dark kind of a blue color. 
so it's, it's been a while since I've used the, uh, SolidWorks, but I think SolidWorks kind of has a similar thing. Um, something that's kind of fully defined, fully dimensioned, it should, you know, change a different color to, to let you know. Okay. Um, so that is sketching and dimensioning in a nutshell. Um, before we leave here, we want to um, want to draw a circle. Okay, so we want to create a hole. And so you're going to come back up here, click on the draw, um, you know, button of the uh, um, of the window. And what you want to draw here is you want to draw a circle. Okay, so we're going to click on circle. We're going to go to the origin because that is now the exact middle of our plate. We're going to click there. And they're going to drag the circle out. It doesn't matter how big you make the circle right now, we're going to dimension it in a second. So I'm just going to drag the, the circle out there. And then same thing we did with the rectangle. So we're going to go to dimensions. Uh, the general dimension is just fine. So the general dimensioner will default into the diameter of the circle. Okay. We're going to click on the general dimensioner, click on the circle, drag the dimension out. It's going to create a new dimension D5. And so we're going to set this dimension to be the diameter of the circle. The diameter of the circle is 50 millimeters. Right. So now we have our sketch. So this sketch here is going to form the basis of our um, of our plate. Um, any questions on, on this so far? Were we able to get this this plate? Yes. Uh, you mean? Oh yeah, it, uh, the the, act, the exact location of that H two doesn't really matter. It, as long as you click the right edge, then it, it'll specify that. I'll, I'll, I'll come back there and. and, 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 and <clears throat> okay, um, so now that we're done with our sketch, our, our next um, our next um, task is to make a surface from this. Because the sketch by itself, you know, we're not able to run a simulation on this. We actually need kind of a solid model. In this case, it's just a two-dimensional surface, and so we uh, we need to make that uh, from. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back to modeling. Okay. So we're going to click on the modeling tab um, right here. And so coming back here, you can see we're we're back to the screen here, which has all of our three planes. We have x y plane, um, z x plane, and y z plane. And so we're going to click on sketch right here. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, concept. Okay. So concept is is at the very top of the screen. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on this um, button here for uh, services from sketches. Okay. And so what that's going to do is that it's going to create a two dimensional surface for you from from the sketch. Okay. And so. One thing you should know is that after you click on surface from sketches, you know, first of all, it, it created the object here. Okay. And so that's that's something that you should get used to in the answer so that you know whenever you create something or whenever you change a setting, it's going to update in the on the left hand uh, project outline. Okay. Then to actually uh, specify the settings for this um, tool, you always do that in the bottom left hand side of the screen. Okay. So as you use ANSYS, you know, it, it'll, it'll start to kind of become second nature where, you know, you're setting a setting and you're going to look in the bottom left hand side of the screen because that's, that's where you actually set. Okay. Okay. Oh, question. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I went to, so you want to make sure you're back in the modeling tab and you're going to click on concept and you're going to go surfaces from sketches. And so that's going to create something in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Well, we haven't made the surface yet, and so we, we need to specify the settings for that. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to specify the base object for this um, for this object. Okay, so the sketch, so in this case, we want to specify the sketch that we want to turn into a surface. So we're going to click on sketch one. Okay, we're going to hit apply. And so after you do that, you can, you can see that, you know, that this uh, the surface from sketches is now set to be, you know, applied to the sketch one. The last thing that we need to do before we create it is we need to specify the thickness of the surface. Okay. Now, you know, when you see thickness, I think most people think of like, you know, like an extrusion. Um, so this is, you know, technically not an extrusion because, you know, we are making just a two dimensional surface, but this thickness here is just used for, it's just used for um, simulation purposes. Okay. So it's, it's like, it's like an imaginary thickness. And so we go back to our project specifications here. We can see that the thickness is five millimeters. 
So let's set that thickness here to five millimeters. And once you do all that, you're gonna click on generate. So another symbol you'll get used to in ANSYS is that, you know, ANSYS uses this lightning bolt symbol for any time that you want to solve something or generate something. Okay. So whenever you're done kind of setting something, the lightning bolt is always good to look for. And so you're gonna click generate. And then after you click generate, then ANSYS kind of is, is smart enough to know that this is kind of a closed surface. And so you wanna create a surface from this. And then you have an interior kind of closed curve here, which is gonna be our pole, okay? And so that is, you know, that is our surface from, from our sketch. Okay. All right, so is everyone able to, um, to get up to this point here? If you're, if you're not able to, I'm, I'm gonna go around for, for a few minutes. Okay. But if you are able to get to this point, then uh, you are all good. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna close Design Modeler. Okay. You wanna be careful, so don't, don't close Workbench. The only thing you wanna close here is just Design Modeler, so close this one. You're gonna close design modeler. Let me clear my um, things here. Okay. You're gonna come back to workbench. And if you come back to workbench, you know, you, you should see that the that this menu has changed very slightly. So, you know, the most important thing is that our geometry, now this has this kind of green check mark next to it. And so what that tells you is that, you know, our geometry is now set. So our, our you know, according to ANSYS, the geometry is now ready. So we're now ready to run the simulation. And so to start specifying the simulation, you're going to double click on uh, model here. Okay. And so what that's going to do is that that's going to open up another program for the ANSYS mechanic. And so while that's uh, launching, I'm going to go around and kind of, you know, uh, for people that are, that are having, having issues, just so that we're kind of all on the same page. We're going to add again. <laughs> all my friends think I'm psycho because I, I picked my theme for everything. But let's go with the class. You can pick the one that you want. I don't care. I'll go with pause. Okay, so I'm gonna walk around. So if you're having issues with the model construction, just raise your hand and I'll, I'll come up. Anyone else having issues with the model construction? Oh, I don't really have any issues. I just wanted to ask a question. But um, do you do generate the thickness? And does it another shape inside of it? It'll always ignore that shape inside of it? Yeah, so what it does is that it, it, it recognizes any kind of closed curve inside the sketch. And so it kind of automatically knows that that's going to be a point. So it's going to avoid, avoid that when you do the surface from sketching. So what is that? You end up making a surface first, and then you want it. You don't want that. Yeah. And you want that um, bolt to like, yeah. you and, like a, in a different way. Yeah. So you would probably make it as two separate sketches. So you make one sketch for, for the base plate, and another sketch for the hole, and then screw that on the side. And then it would just be like the assembly file on X. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. It was free. It's all right. This yeah. Oh, yeah. I might take one of these. Okay. All right. So let's let's go ahead and jump into mechanical. So mechanical is uh, mechanical is the program that we're going to spend the majority of our time in. So this is the program where we're going to apply our meshing and our boundary conditions. Okay. So let me go ahead and close uh, close all of these. Clear my sketches. Okay. Um, since it's the first time, I mean, we we just booted up the license server, so you may you may get this screen right here. Um, this is not normal. So this is just this is just another ad. Okay. So we need to pay for ANSYS Premium or something. And so if you want to view your geometry, you're going to go to the left-hand side of the screen here where it says project, and then click on geometry. And so this is kind of the classic view that you should see. So you should see the uh, your geometry. Um, and so in our case, it's a plate with the... Uh, okay. All right. So, so the first thing that we're going to do uh, is we need to mesh our geometry. Okay. So you remember, remember when, we were, uh, when we were talking a couple of weeks ago um, you know, the first step in ANSYS after you define the geometry is to discretize it, okay? So that means to break it up into lots of different tiny elements. Okay, and so to do that, we're going to come to the left-hand side of the screen here. We're going to click on mesh right here. Okay. If you'll notice, you know, the mesh here has a little light bolt. Okay. okay, so the mesh here has this kind of little lightning bolt right here. 
And so that tells you that, you know, you need to do something. Okay. And so, you know, Antis kind of uses this convention where if it has a green check mark, that means it's all good. So that means there should, really shouldn't be anything for you to check there. And then the lightning bolt or the question mark means that you should, you know, Antis wants you to do something. So the reason to have the lightning bolt on the mesh right now is that, you know, this, this geometry doesn't have a mesh on it. Okay. So to create a mesh, if you want to just create a very basic mesh, you can right click on mesh right here, and you can just click on generate mesh. Okay. So let's try that. So let's go ahead and click on generate mesh right here, and let's see what happens. So this should be pretty quick. It's just a, it's just a very, um, you know, very generic, very default mesh. Okay. And so you can see here, you know, kind of visually what, what happens. So now, you know, after I click on generate mesh, it's taken my geometry and then broken it up into all these little tiny elements here, okay? So in this case, you know, the default mesh, it shows a square elements with a couple triangles, that's, that's pretty normal. But for the majority of, of the cases, it, it is um, squares, okay? All right, one thing that's gonna be really useful uh, is to always look at the statistics of your mesh, okay? And so whenever you run a finite element simulation, you, you're almost always going to get asked of, you know, how many elements are in your mesh, right? Because the number of elements in your mesh determine the accuracy of your simulation. So to find out the number of elements in your mesh, you're going to go to the bottom left-hand side of the screen. And you'll see that there is a, a button there for statistics. So you're going to click on statistics. And you can see the number of nodes and the number of elements in this mesh. So for this particular mesh, we have 258 nodes, okay? And so the nodes being these, uh, all these points right here. So if you go in and count all the points, you should get 258, okay? And the number of elements is 74. So if you count the number of elements here, that's, you know, you'll get 74. Um, right. So this is, so this is okay, right? So this is, this is okay for our first mesh. It's very coarse though. So, you know, normally you want to have a more refined mesh. So let's, let's, let's refine this mesh. Oh, professor? Yeah. So just as a question, my mesh is different than yours. Yeah. Is that like something I might've done wrong or is no. it just how the machine generates? Yeah. So, so whenever you apply a mesh there, there's some degree of randomness. And so just, just to kind of give you, you know, we're not, we're not going to go into the fine details of meshing, but basically what happens mm -hmm. is that, you know, these points that are placed here are, are done somewhat randomly. Um, you know, there's, there's still some structure to it and then they connect it with them. So, you know, everyone's mesh is always going to be a little bit different. So if you, even if you use the same exact same settings as you know, the person next to you, you know, your meshes might end up with a few extra elements for a few less elements. And that's, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. So let's refine this mesh. And so when I say refine the mesh, what I mean is we want to make the elements smaller so that we get a more, we get more elements basically. We'll start our discussion on Tuesday, but basically, you know, the more elements that you have in your mesh, you know, the more accurate your simulation is going to be. So generally, you want to add more elements to your mesh for an accurate simulation. Okay, so if you click on mesh right here, and you go to the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you should see there is there is one setting here for element size. Okay, and so that is the rough size of the elements, and so by um, and by size, I mean kind of the, the length of the edge of the element. So Antis has kind of picked one automatically kind of based on the dimensions of your geometry, but usually this default number is pretty coarse. So you want to pick something that's more fine. Okay, so right now the uh, the element size is set to be about, looks like about three centimeters. Uh, so we want to make that um, small. Uh, so first thing you want to do, first thing, let's let's change the units. Uh, questions. How do you pull back up the details of mesh on the bottom left if you do click the edges? Oh, uh, if, the, if you lose that screen, you can come up here and go to manage. And then uh, you want to go details right now. Or the, the, the keyboard shortcut is control. Okay. Um, let's change the units. And so just to make things a bit more convenient. And so the units, um, annoyingly, is in, is in a slightly different place here than in Design Modeler. And so to change the units, you want to make sure that you click on Home. And then the, the button, and then the setting to change the units is right here. I guess it's a little bit nicer because there's, there's an actual you know, symbol. For it. OK, so let's change the units. Um, you can either change it to centimeters, or you can change it to millimeters. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to change it to millimeters just to be kind of consistent with our uh, other one. Um, but centimeters should be fine enough as well. Okay. 
And so you can see after we changed the units to millimeters, it kind of updated the, the length here as well. So instead of being, you know, three times 10 to the minus two meters, instead we have um, 30.116 millimeters. Okay, so let's change this. And so let's let's make this smaller and let's kind of see what happens. So, you know, before we do anything, you know, you know, kind of burn this image of the mesh into your head so that, you know, after we change the mesh, you can kind of see how it changes. So let's change it. So let's let's cut this, uh, let's cut this uh, size in half. So let's change the element size to 15 millimeters. Okay, so after you make a, after you make a change to the element size, you need to come back up to mesh right here. You need to right click it and then generate the mesh again. Okay, and so now that we've changed the element size to 15 millimeters, you can see that our mesh is looking much better. Okay. Right. In particular, you know, if you if you look at the if you look at the geometry of the hole in the middle, you can see that the hole is actually much more well defined. So actually, let me go back to 30 millimeters just so that I can get it illustrated to you. So we go back to 30 millimeters for a second. You can see if we look at the geometry of the hole right here, you can see that because the elements are so big, we've kind of lost some of the some of the curvature of that hole. You can see that we kind of have, you know, we kind of have like a like a like a, a an octagon or a stop sign there. Okay. Um, and so that's usually not good. So you know, because our mesh is so coarse here, we're losing a little bit of a geometrical fidelity. Okay. So that's the first thing you should look for when you're generating a mesh is you want to make sure that your, your geometry is being represented faithfully. Okay, and so if we change this mesh size, so I'm going to change it even lower. So I'm going to change it to down to, uh, to 10 millimeters. Okay. So change it down to 10. Let's generate the mesh. Okay. And you can see now that the hole is, is a lot more smooth. Okay. okay, so how many elements is, is a good amount of elements, right? That's, that's kind of the first question that people ask, because we can keep going, right? So we can, keep, we can change this down to five if you want. Notice that notice how every time you make the element size smaller, it takes the it takes your computer a little bit longer to generate the mesh. Okay. And so this is you know this is a pretty good mesh. Right Another thing that you know hopefully you were, you were kind of uh, looking at is you know as you were changing the size of the mesh, the number of elements was changing as well. Okay. If you recall from uh, from our beginning settings where our mesh size was thirty, we only had about seventy five elements. You can see now that we've changed the mesh size, we've reduced it pretty dramatically. Our element count is much higher now. So we have 2,333 elements uh, instead. Okay, so how many elements is enough? Questions? Um, have you stopped it from generating? Oh, if you uh if you if you push it a little bit too far, um uh, usually people people usually people wait till the second activity to do that. Uh, but there there is kind of a, a stop button kind of in the bottom down here. So you can go and click that. Um, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes if it's gotten to the point where it's, it's kind of eating up too much RAM, um, it, you may have to just close ANSYS completely. Um, so yeah, you want to be a little bit careful. So yeah, don't, don't push it too, too far. Um, yeah, cause, cause mesh generation, um, can be a very expensive process. So it should be, so I, I don't have it here, but it should be kind of down the right. So there's kind of a red, a red button down. Oh, no, I thought it was the problem. Yeah, it should be it should be next to the private screen. Yeah. So, how many elements is enough? Um, that is a question we're going to answer throughout the class. And so, you know, if you if you want kind of a straight answer right now, in order to determine if your mesh is enough, what we say is you need to run what's called a mesh convergence test. Um, and so, basically, you're going to run your simulation at different mesh densities until your simulation results converge. Um, but that's something we're going to discuss later uh, later. Probably not next Tuesday, but probably the Tuesday after that, because you know, because we're pushed back a little bit, we have to do our next activity next Thursday. But for now, you know, for this activity, I think if your mesh, if your element size is, is anywhere between five and ten millimeters, I think that's 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 plenty for this activity. Um, and so you should get a mesh that kind of looks like this. Eventually, you know, you'll you'll kind of get to the point where you can kind of visually kind of inspect meshes and you'll be able to kind of you know have some good intuition of kind of what looks like a good mesh versus not a good. All right. Any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay. Good. Okay. Um, our next step here is to apply the boundary. Okay. 
So if we come if we come back to our project specifications here, you know, we need to apply boundary conditions on this simulation. So we have two main boundary conditions. And so our boundary condition on the left is we need to apply a fixed support. Right? So we basically need to take this plate and fix it to the on the left side. Right? And so that basically tells us that that left side of the plate is not going to move um, at all. Cool. And then the other boundary condition that we're going to apply is we're going to be applying a tensile pressure on the right. Okay. And so we want to be pulling this, this plate off. Remember what boundary conditions are. So boundary conditions are just any kind of external influence or external force that's going to be affecting your geometry. Okay, so let's let's look and see how we do how we do. Okay, so let's come back into ANSYS Mechanical. So let's apply our fixed support first. Okay, so to apply a fixed boundary condition, you're going to go um, highlight your mouse over static structural A5. You're going to right click it. You're going to go to insert. And then you're going to come down here and you're going to apply the, uh, the setting for fixed support. Okay. Okay. So if you read kind of the tooltip for fixed support, you can see that you can read it and say that it's, it inserts a fixed support boundary condition that prevents the selected geometries of the mesh from moving or deforming. So we're going to click on that. And then what we want to specify is we want to apply this fixed support boundary condition to the left edge of our plates. Okay. And so we're going to mouse over the left edge of the plates. It might be a little bit hard to, to get it just right, but you want to make sure that you just, you just select that left edge. Okay. You want to mouse over just that left edge. Okay. And then when you click on it, you should see just that left edge highlight in green. So after you click that, go ahead and hit apply. And so that's going to apply that fixed support boundary condition on the left edge. Okay. Right. That's good. <clears throat> The next thing we need to apply here is a force. Okay. Now, normally, you know, we, we will apply the force as a force boundary condition. Okay. So you can see here that we have force. Um, but, you know, for this particular uh, problem, you know, the way the force is defined is as a pressure. If you come back to the, uh, the project specifications here, we can see that our loading is given in units of pressure. So our loading here is uh, 1,000 um, megapascal. All right, so let's go ahead and, and apply that to this, to this here. So we're going to right click on static structural A5. You're going to go to insert, okay? And you're going to insert a pressure. You're going to click on pressure. And then same thing we did with the fixed support boundary condition. First thing we need to specify here is the, is the portion of the geometry that we're going to apply it to. Okay. So we're going to click on the right edge of the model here and we're going to click on apply. So that's going to tell ANSYS that we want to apply a, a pressure boundary condition on that right edge. The next thing that we need to do is we need to specify the magnitude of the force, the magnitude and the direction. <laughs> now, if you notice one thing here that, you know, ANSYS is highlighting this box, uh, this box in yellow. Okay. Um, so whenever ANSYS kind of highlights something in yellow like that, that means that ANSYS wants you to specify something there before it continues. Okay. And so in this case, ANSYS wants you to specify the magnitude of the force. Okay. okay. But, you know, we're, we're not going to do it in that uh, setting there. Okay. So right now, you know, we, not only do we need to specify the magnitude of the force, we need to specify the direction of the force as well. So to do that, we're going to come here, and then we're going to we're going to change this setting here for defined by. So the normal uh, defined by uh, for a pressure is going to be normal to the surface, and that's that's fine for most cases. But we want to specify this in terms of its components, because we want to specify the horizontal component and the vertical component kind of individually. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go to that defined by section, and you're going to define by components instead. And you're going to click on components, and you're going to see that that changed kind of the the lower part. So now you're going to um, specify the x component of the force and the Y component of force. And so in our particular case, we only want a horizontal force. So, so we're going to specify the X component. We're going to specify it to be a one, uh, 1,000 megapascal. So we're going to do 1,000, hit enter. And then we're going to need the Y component at zero because we want no vertical component of this force. Okay. All right. Any questions on, on that so far? Uh, I had closed out the bottom tabs. Um, I see how to bring back 
graph and tabular data, but it's not showing it. Um, let's see. It's in one of these. Another thing you can do is that you can click reset layout here. And so if you click reset layout, it may it may bring, bring things back on. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you ever kind of mess up the window, uh, you, the quick the quick fix is to hit reset. Um, if that doesn't work, you may have to open up manually from. Oh, it's graph right here. Yeah, I had opened them both back here, but it wasn't showing. Like, oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah. Don't don't worry about that. That's um, yeah. That's uh, we we're not going to use that for, for the reset. Uh, yeah, yeah. Question. Uh, for geometry, I keep on thinking the edge, but no. Ah. Um, did you did you set your geometry or did you set your properties to 2D from the very beginning? Okay. Um, so if you're having trouble clicking the edge, um, one thing that you can do is you can you can kind of manually tell Antis and look for an edge. And so if you look at this kind of um, this bar right here, um, by default, Antis goes to kind of smart selector, which is you know whichever you're kind of closest to with the mouse. But you can tell you can kind of force Antis to select an edge by clicking on this middle one right here. And so it's the box with a little edge onto it. They just click the edge and then put apply, and then it just says no selection. Oh really? Um, let me. I'll, I'll come by. I'll come by in a bit to just to um, yeah. I'll, I'll come take a look. Any other questions on on the boundary conditions here? Okay. Cool. All right. So we're we're just about done, and so the last thing we need to do is just simply just run the simulation. Um, but before that, we need to specify some of the outputs. And so we need to make sure that you know, ANSYS knows what, um, what results to show us. Okay. And so to specify the outputs, you're going to right click on solution A6. You're going to go to insert. Okay. And so this is going to, um, you know, this is, with this, we're going to tell ANSYS which results that we want to, to show. Okay. So we're going to go to deformation. And first thing that we should always uh, want to see in our static structural simulations is the total deformation. So that's going to tell us how much how much our plate is going to deform in response to the load. Okay. So we're going to click on total deformation. The next thing we're going to do is we want to look at the stress. Okay. All right. So if you remember from our discussion on Tuesday, we talked about this idea of equivalent stress. And so equivalent stress is kind of a scalar representation of the stress state within the uh, within the solid. So once again, you're going to right click on solution A6. You're going to go to insert. You're going to go to stress, and then you're going to click on equivalent von Mises stress. Okay. Um, there's other results here that you can look for. Um, you know, if you remember from our discussion on Tuesday, we looked, we talked about the maximum principal stress, and so you can view that one as well. Uh, but for now, this is this is enough. And so you know, usually for structural simulation, the two default or the two main results that you should be looking at is total deformation and equivalent stress. Okay. All right, so go ahead and once you kind of specify those things, you know, make sure you double check your boundary conditions, everything looks good. Uh, go ahead and click solve. Okay. And so when you click solve, this is this is when ANSYS is actually going to run the simulation. So this is the, this might take a little bit of time. Right. And so after it's it's finished, and so the way that you know it's finished is that you know in the bottom left here, you should see you know the that progress bar go away. Uh, another way that you can tell is that you'll see green check marks next to all your solution fields. Okay. And so let's look at the total deformation field. So let's go ahead and click that. And so now you can see the total deformation of your, um, your model. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, you can see here that, you know, it's, it's, it's displayed to you in a color one. Okay. So the colors here kind of indicate the magnitude of the deformation. So let's, let's do a little bit of sanity check here just to make sure that our results make sense. And so first thing we're going to notice here on the left hand side of the plate, we, our plate here is uh, kind of a deep blue or dark blue. Now, if we look at the color legend here, we can see that that specifies, you know, a zero deformation. Okay. And so if you think back to the boundary condition, remember the boundary condition that we specified here on the left hand side was a fixed support, right? And a fixed support basically means that that section of the, of the plate is not going to move or deform. Um, and so that makes a lot of sense. The other thing that we notice here is that you know the maximum deformation is given by this kind of dark red color, and it's occurring at the right hand side of the plate or the section where we're pulling. Okay? And of course, that makes a lot of sense too because that you know that's where we're pulling on the plate. Okay. 
Now let's look at the stress field. And so the equivalent stress field, when you click on that, you should see that the stress is going to concentrate around the top and bottom edges of the hole. Okay. We kind of see this kind of almost like butterfly pattern of the stress that comes from, from them. And so your stress should look kind of fairly similar to this. And just like the deformation, you know, based on the based on the locations that are highlighting in red, um, that is where the stress is going to concentrate. Okay. And so the highest stress part or the part that's kind of taking on the most kind of load. It's kind of these upper and lower edges of the image. And then the places that are blue, those are places that are in lower stress. All right, any questions on this? Was everyone able to kind of get these get these results or, or something pretty similar? I'll come around. So there's, you know, that's that's basically it for the activity. Um, and so during for the rest of class today, I'm gonna to go around and kind of help people for you know for ones that are um, you know that you're not able to get these results. Um, if you're able to get this, you can kind of continue on with the activity. And so if you go to the Canvas site um, and you download this PDF here, if you come to the very bottom of the, of the activity here, you'll see that there are more kind of tasks for you to do. Okay. So basically, you know, the, for the most part, what I want you guys to do for the rest of the activity is kind of play around with the settings a little bit, uh, play around with the mesh, uh, play around with the loading, uh, change the size of the hole. Okay. And I want you to kind of see uh, how it results, okay? Um, so, you know, um, uh, so, you know, for, for this activity, you know, you're, you, you have to kind of complete all these tasks here. Uh, but of course, you know, you're not limited to this as, at, at all either. Right? And so if there's anything else that you want to test, um, you know, definitely feel free to do it. You know, so this is kind of your chance to kind of, you know, explore answers kind of on your first, on your first try, right? So we kind of did an activity here, you know, we kind of just did a walkthrough, kind of start to finish of what you need to do. But of course, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do um, to the activity as well. You can add additional loads, you can add additional constraints, um, you can change the mesh, and so you can change the mesh to triangular, okay? Um, and you can do kind of a lot of other things as well. All right, any, any final questions before I, I kind of start walking around? Okay, all right, so for the rest of class today, so you guys have about 20 more minutes, um, you can, kind of, you can continue, work, uh, continue working on this. Uh, whatever you don't finish today is going to be homework, but that's going to be due by next Friday. Um, I'll go ahead, or next Saturday. We're not having a due on the unlucky day. We're having a due on the 14th. Um, so, you know, that'll be um, done. Okay. All right, so I'll start making my rounds. You know, if, if you want to just balance, that's fine too. Uh, but, you know, um, you know, take advantage of this time. If you can. Yeah, I'm going to save it. Yeah, so you need it's uh, it's it's three years. So what do you do? <laughs> we did it, but um, it might it might have might have reversed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna close this. Let's put the change. Let's change this to two. Okay. 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 We're we're so we're never gonna do the two. It's it only just for yeah. um, only just because it makes like sense of the error. That's crazy. Much better. So post this oh, on no. the post Yeah, try it, try it again. Because when you're in the yeah, movie, a pressure, you know, pressure is just a real pressure. It's so by default, it's just going to want you to apply pressure. And so when you, when you try to find the pressure, you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do me some bad? <laughs> oh yeah, so you should. I think you should be able to get it. Yeah, yeah. you Yeah, I just put my grid. You want to get the PDF level? Yeah. 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 Yeah, add like more than two ones. Okay. Like, just screenshots of like. Oh yes, yeah. So for each for each one for each of these, um, you know, when you change the loading, uh, I want to see a screenshot of the total deformation with stress. 
And then for each of these, I think they, they each have short answer questions too. Yeah. My question is, how do you see That's a great question. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll go over that kind of last thing after I make one. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, but just very quickly, so ANSYS, because ANSYS uses several different programs, it actually needs to save like a collection. You can go back to the you can go to apply. You want to do um, save archive to. So that's going to create kind of a zip file or yeah. archive. archive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what that's going to do is that's going to create a single file that you can kind of transport between machines. One of the annoying things of ANSYS is that if you just click save, it'll save kind of a folder, but then the, the file paths in that folder are very strict. So if you try to open up those files, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you can say it's like, I can't find something on this path. The file, that path only exists on this screen. Sure. So, the, so the way to kind of save it is to actually save it as a as a zip file and then transport it as a zip file. And this is exactly the file that you can create. There should be a they might have changed it. So yeah, yeah, try that one. Yeah. 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 No, it's saying that's okay. Let me let me try it on my system. Yeah. I'm not sure how it will. It might it might just be the try the right word archive and see if it saves that as just a single file. Because if you just do a regular what do you do? That's like a a project um file you lay out the folder. That's what it looks like. Here's a project file. You just print salt for the try 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 doing that and um I guess I'll test it out in my system. So if you want to do the other ones. Yes, <laughs> 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 We gave it to the 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 it does. So that's one thing that. Never had. So, yeah. right. So, by default, the answer is a material called struct that will save some. So, struct will say actually, what's happening is having the exact same problem. You'll see it have to say that. Well, you're going to see it. Oh, okay. So, that's one thing. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry. I have a little bit of 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 a
You see here that that's, that's, that's kind of the regular tool. Oh, I know why. Because in order to yes. create the bit file, so you have to create the regular one. So create the regular one. You just had one. Um, so you're going to move this file. And then to open up again, you're going to no, I think you can well, double click it by clicking the, 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 the web box. Yeah. Yeah. Someone just yeah. asked on the Discord. How do you like select it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I should go over there. Okay, uh, so there were a couple questions that were uh, kind of consistent. So let me kind of answer those questions for, for everyone here. Let me check the Zoom chat. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. So one, one other thing too is that the circle that we get for this activity is different from the pictures. And so these pictures show you a different uh, a different thing. Um, I didn't do that to mess with you guys, although you know maybe, maybe I should remember that. Again. But I, I originally created this activity with a bigger hole. Um, but since changing, uh, since changing the activity, I've, I've just made a whole smaller. So you know, just just kind of go with what you see. So, um, so yeah, your your figures sh shouldn't match up with these. Okay, so one question that I got a lot is, you know, how you know how are we gonna how are you, how are you guys gonna turn these in? Um, so what I expect for you guys is that um, you know you're gonna turn in a single PDF report um, that details kind of everything you did for the activity. Um, I don't want your ANSYS files. You know, I'm not I'm not opening up you know 40 ANSYS files. That's that's crazy. Uh, I'll do that for the project, but not here. Okay. And so for each of these, um, for each of these, um, you know, iterations, I want you to show me a two images. And so I want you to show me a screenshot of the total deformation field, and I want you to show me a screenshot of the equivalent stress. Okay. And so that should be in your report. And then I want you to answer all these questions as as well. Um, now, you know, uh, if you remember from the first class, you know, for these activities, I, I'm only grading them on completion. And so these activities are mostly just for you guys just to just to do it, just to learn ANSYS. Um, generally, I, I expect that everyone that is in this class is interested in learning ANSYS, and so I don't grade these too too strictly, okay? And so what I do to when I grade these is I just kind of go through and I just check and make sure you did everything, um, and then that's good, okay? Um, I expect, you know, because everyone's doing the exact same simulations for these, I expect everyone's screenshots to look extremely similar, and that is expected, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, but at least, you know, the, the short answer question is you should at least, you know, try to write for yourself, okay? Um, so, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't stress too much on that. These activities are just mostly for you to, to learn, okay? Okay, so that's that. And of course, at the bottom here, there are short answer questions. And so, and so, and so if you type these out and turn those in with your report, that's, that's, that's expected as well. Okay. okay, so the other question I've gotten pretty consistently is how do you save your results? Okay. So saving an ANSYS is actually a little bit annoying because of just how many files that it saves. And so the first thing you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna save. Okay. You're gonna go to the, you're gonna go to workbench and you're gonna click on file and go to save. So I'm just going to save this to the desktop. So this is uh, ANSYS activity. One, put my initial is JST. Okay. And so I'm going to click save. And so after you save it, and so if you go to the desktop here, I'll just go there. Too. Okay. So you go to the desktop, go to the desktop, go to the desktop. Fine. Okay. So if you go to the desktop here, you'll see that it actually saved a couple files for us. Okay. And so, you know, it's it's going to save this file called the WP, WBPJ file. And so that stands for Workbench Project. Okay. And so don't be misled though. So, you know, you may think that this is the file that you need to, to save. You know, if you want to kind of transfer this project home, work on it on a different computer, okay? But this is tricky because this file here is actually only a, a reference file, okay? So all your files are actually stored in a folder that's right next to it, okay? So there's two, there's two folders. So there is a folder called Backup, and then there is a folder called um, ANSYS Activity 1, you know, Files, okay? So this is actually where all your files are actually located. So you, know, you actually need to save and so actually, you know, all of your project files are stored in this folder here, then the reference files are But to make things a little bit easier, and so, you know, for, mo for the most part, you know, it's, it's most convenient just to save one file, you're going to go to File, and then you're going to go to Archive, okay? 
And so what Archive is going to do is it's going to take all of your result files and then zip it into one file that you can transport between computers. Okay. So to click on Archive, it's going to ask you where do you want to put it, and then it's going to create this file called WBPZ. Okay. And so it added that Z at the end there just to let you know that it's a zip file. Okay. So, so go ahead and click Save. And then something's going to pop up. It's going to ask you what you want to archive and just click OK. And then what it's going to do is going to save a single file here called the WDPZ file. Okay. I think if you're if you're on the if you're on the if you're on the lab computers here, it, the icon is, is is not working. I think probably once we reset the systems, it, it'll start working again. But that is the file that you want to save and you want to transport between computers. Because okay. what's going to happen if, if you use the regular file here, the WBPJ file, okay, even if you transport the folder and you move it to a different system. What's going to happen is that you know you're, if you try to work on this at home, for instance, uh, Antis is not going to recognize that file. It's not going to be able to find your project files because the file paths in this are very strict. Okay, so that's why I always recommend people is that if you're going to be saving your results, so you're going to be transporting between different computers, um, always save the archive file instead. So step one is to just save it regularly, and then step two is to archive it, and then the one that you want to save. Uh, or the, the one that you want to transport between computers is the archive file, or the PZ. Okay. And then once you save the archive file, um, you should be able to just double click it. Or you know, if you double click this, you can say that you just want to open it up at Workbench, and then it should be able to launch uh, from there. All right. Any other questions? Yes. On uh, archive options, which do click on? Um, just, just, just click the default. So just click on. Um, okay. I think there's three check boxes. Just, just click the, just click on. Okay. Any other questions on, on this? Okay, all right, so that's, uh, well, we have about seven more minutes, and so I'll, I'll, I'll stick around and answer any questions that you may have. Um, you know, but if not, then, you know, thank you guys for coming uh, this week, and thank you guys for your patience. I know this, this activity was a week overdue, but, you know, there was the issues with the license server. Uh, so our, our, our IT guy, Lorenzo, kind of came in a bit you know, uh, earlier, so, you know, if you ever see Lorenzo around campus, you know, say, say, just say thank you, thank you so much. You know, this is this is only possible because of him. Um, and yeah, so thank you for coming this week. Um, um, stay cool this weekend. You know, don't uh, don't spend too much time outside if you can help it. Uh, it's going to be over 100 degrees every day. So, uh, so yeah, stay cool, stay safe, and I will see you guys next week. <laughs> I opened it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a file that you open. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, you just said it's wrong. Did you just tell you like I'd rather read it myself. Oh, oh, no, I don't know. Then that way, I saw the novel, so. I don't know. I don't know. that's <laughs> 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 And you can say that's it. We have a picture of you, right? Yeah, it's just going to be drop and click anything. Okay, just so I can No, I think. Yeah, I think you need a little bit more, you know. Now you have to zip the bottle. So you have to zip the bottle. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, you're in my back. I just want to zip the bottle. Yeah. 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 Probably just uh, I think it's a few centuries. Yeah, I, I think I should. I will probably work out. You can probably keep it out. Like, how it is done. Oh, you want to name it? Okay, but he named it. Yeah, what could have been? I have been using the J is. What I understand, we're very like project, the like project, the project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is, it's the work bench <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't think he's a good one. I wouldn't even say he was a good one. He caught me. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm just a picture. Oh, the max out of it. You just argued. Yeah. What is that? This is like that max you all came Max came on. So when I get these, if you try to open them and get yeah. back up, we can go with them for these decisions. So it's at least for now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I forgot exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it's six and it's just a good idea. Because you have two full pages of reading. So I think that's just a bad thing. This is your copy. Oh, sorry, sorry. Stop doing it. Uh, oh, yes, so yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure. So it's not you cannot have any stuff. Why? Okay. Oh, and this so it's like this thing that they're watching this crash. Maybe it's just there's some good range or something. Yeah. 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 Just wanted to make sure. Yes. All right, guys. One, one very quick thing. Um, if you're having trouble saving it, I forgot that Antis doesn't like to have spaces in the name. And so if you're saving the file name, if, you, uh -oh. if you're going to have spaces, just do underscores instead. Or try to make it one word. Yeah. Antis is, Antis is developed in Linux, and so they, they don't like spaces. And... Oh, it did delete. It went off. So for, uh, for those of you on Zoom, uh, you know, you're, trying, you're having trouble taking it, uh, make sure that there are no spaces. Yep. If you save something, um, you know, make sure that either if you're going to have spaces, put underscores, or try to make it all one word. You can see the values. Values change. I was like, oh, I'll do okay. it. All right. So I think the next class is going to come in soon. Sign up. Thank you. I don't need to know.